Welcome, Scotty. Yeah, no worries. How you going, Berkey? Good to see you, Scotty. Thanks for coming along, mate. Really good to see you. Happy face again. It's a, it's a thrill to have you here on our show. Um, Scotty, can we dive in, if we can get started, mate, if we can dive into the early years of Colin Scott in Townsville, what did, what did that look like as a kid growing up, your family life, all that sort of thing? Yeah, well, for me, you know, obviously rugby league was a big part of my life and, you know, um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, for any young fellow or any young young one growing up and with my job now I, I work with a lot of um uh well part indigenous of course and i talk to a lot of the young indigenous kids around and, and get make sure that you know get yourself into sport whether it be rugby league boxing or whatever it can set you up you know in life in general and for me obviously rugby league was my background and um yeah it took me took me through some great years and um and as was mentioned you know being a part of the very first State of Origin game, and uh, then moving to Brisbane from Townsville, um, and and playing with Wynnum and playing with, you know, in the in the premierships there and with all the great players and that. But uh, yeah, growing up, growing up in Townsville, mate, you know, as a young fella, uh, rugby league was my life, and um, yeah, it took me to a lot of places. Mate, did you have a um, uh, just some intel about your mum and dad, uh, brothers and sisters? Were you like a working class family in Townsville? Yeah, well, look, um, I was I was adopted. As a young fella, uh, to my mother's best friend, yep. And um, I grew up, you know, in a non-indigenous family. And um, it was, it's uh, when I say it's funny. Uh, every holidays or school holidays, I used to go to my mum's place, you know. And as a young fella growing up, you know, well, it wasn't until I was about ten, and I said to me foster mother, I said, "How come I keep going to their place on school holidays?" <laughs> she said, "That's your mother." I said, "Really, well, mother, aren't you?" And she said, "No, no, don't worry about." It. So. Back in those days, that was just a part of life. Yep. And I just got on with my life, and I said, "Oh well, that just must be the way things are." And and uh, yeah, just grew up uh, along those lines. But uh, now, you know, having a look back at it, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, take it a bit difficult, you know, with with being adopted out or, yep. or not growing up with their families. But you know, for me, I look at it as you know. Um, it was it was in the bad times, and um, my mother's best friend um, helped her out, you know, by adopting me. So yeah, it was great, you know. And I had two um, two two families. So that's nice, months. buddy. That was great. Really good. So you had the love of two mums and two families. You can't you can't complain about that. No. And um, yeah, obviously uh, rugby league, um, as I said, took over my life. And uh, playing junior league, um, I, I looked at my coaches as as fathers, you know, I'm a junior coach. Uh, Merv Keys um, in Townsville, he was my junior coach right through the juniors and I always called him dad and then when we got into the senior ranks it was Marshall Colwell um, and he kept and coached us up there and then and then I went to Brisbane and Desi Morris, <laughs> yeah I called him dad too. He's, he's That's me. fantastic. Yeah. So Col, in those early Townsville years was there a, was there something that felt made you different? Did you have a lot more hunger than some of your mates or some other players that you, you you felt you could really go that next step from Townsville elsewhere? Yeah, well, obviously, coming up through the grades, our, our A-grade players, and a lot of them um, went and played for South and Brisbane and made A-grade, and I used to look at that and think to myself, you know, I want to do that, and I want to go, I want to, go to Brisbane, you know? So uh, I had a lot of inspiration from, from a lot of... Um, uh, fellas in Townsville, older guys for, than me that went on that path. And so, yeah, I, I sort of set myself a bit of a goal to, you know, well, I, I want to follow these guys, you know, I want to I want to play in Brisbane too. And, um, yeah, and, and followed along and, and uh, yeah, went along that path and uh, backed it up. Because in those days, Simo, you can vouch for this, mate. The, I mean, the Foley Shield was a, a fantastic yeah. competition, wasn't it, for North exactly. Queensland? Like some of the legends that came out of Foley Shield football, yeah. I think in North Queensland, Colin, like, you know, uh, Vern and Frank Daisy are oh. icons up there, aren't they, to be honest with you? Yeah. Simo, what's your thoughts yeah. on the whole Foley Shield comp? Yeah, mate, I mean, it's uh, it's probably one of the most powerful competitions in Queensland. Um, and like you said, those those legends that have come out of it uh, in, that, in that region is uh, phenomenal, which... Um, we, uh, just off camera, uh, Berkey, um, Scotty and I were talking about um, rugby league in regional Queensland areas, <clears throat> and Scotty was just saying of how much untapped uh, talent 
lies up in those mm. sort of areas that you know possibly have flown under the radar and never actually gone on to bigger and better things but up in that foley shield they would have been superstars oh for sure and and just on the foley shield side of things i mean that was something for us too as young fellas to play in foley shield and i did um in 79 against the daisy boys yeah uh, they were just great players you know legends absolutely and, and one thing that happened um in 79 um, I got picked in an invitational side to play the North Queensland side and Frank Daisy was the fullback in the North Queensland side. Wow, he was too. And then I got yeah. picked in the Queensland side <laughs> you know, wow. um, from that and I and, and went on and played for uh, Queensland. And um, I remember getting interviewed one time by this, um, um, you know, guy and he said to me, he said, so, he said, Scotty, he said, look, I want to do an interview with you. I said, oh, yeah, right. Huh? And this is before the Foley Shield final. Yeah. In 79. And he said to me, he says, I'm going to ask you a question. This is what I want you to say. I said, oh, here right. I was only a young kid. And he said, yeah, Frank Daisy's a North Queensland fullback and you're the Queensland fullback. How do you reckon you'll go on the weekend? And he said, I want you to say, we'll see who's number one. And so I, I did. He <laughs> said, we'll see who's number one. I went back to my motel and I went, uh, I went back in. I'm thinking. Oh, no. <laughs> Mate, these days, you boys, oh, they can fight, man. Yeah. Yeah, so what a... I rang him up at the um, <laughs> at the radio station. I said, mate, can you do me a favour? He said, what's that, Scotty? He said, don't play that interview. <laughs> I said, what, mate? Why? He said, it's a good interview. I said, no, mate, don't play that interview. Mate, you don't know these days, you boys. They can fight. <laughs> and so he did. He cut it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so, uh, Scotty, mate, have to, so moving from 79, um, how did you get to Brisbane? I mean, that transition, and obviously, was it a hard decision to, to leave, you know, having your roots there? I mean, how did that sort of come about with the with the offer to come to East initially yep. and that decision to, to, to move south? Yeah, well, back in 79, I went through the system, you know, back in those days, you could make the Queensland side from, you know, uh, Townsville, Cairns, wherever you, you were. You had to play for um, uh, Queensland country, and then city versus country and the system. I went through that and, and made the Queensland side in 79. Um, and um, yeah, um, played for Queensland and I ended up staying in Brisbane for about a month, you know, because we were playing the, the state, uh, interstate games back then. Yeah. Back in, in 79 and then, um, and then the Origin game uh, come around and um, 1980, the very first game. So, um, uh, yeah, mate, it was, um, what happened was that um, East came up and signed myself and Gene Miles yep. and uh, Tony Cambrose. And um, we were going to East because Des Miles was the coach, but they sacked him and then we pulled out of the contracts. And um, Gene, Gene actually sat out uh, the 1980 season. But I end up going to East about March or April because I said, oh, look, I, I want to play for Queensland again. So I played, uh, went to East, but they put me in reserve grade and I played reserve grade all season until they picked a Queensland side and they picked me from reserve grade to play really? for Queensland. So just out of curiosity, Cole, who would have been the East A grade fullback in 1980? Roger Kewen or? No, Alan Power, actually. Alan Power, yeah, ex yeah, Okay, that's yeah. That's from, from yeah. Sydney. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, he was a great, yeah, he was a great player back in his days, but obviously as a back end of his career. Yeah. Um, but I didn't end up playing A grade till I finished the Origin series, and uh, went back and um, ended up playing in the centres. That's right. And then the next year, we all went to Wynnum where Des Morris was, you know, because we all wanted to play for Des under, under Des, Des Morris. Yeah. yeah. So we all went to um, went to Wynnum. Greg Dowling signed, Terry Butler, Gino, myself, Tony Cambrius. So. There was a lot of us that went from one uh, town, Townsville to, to East, yeah. Now we're going to come to those golden years of Wynnum shortly, but 1980, I think it's July 12th or July 15th, 1980, we're 40 years this year from the very first game. Can you believe it? 40 years? Yeah, July 8th, yep. yep. July 8th, beg your pardon. I was, yeah, yep. okay. I knew it was July. I was actually at the match as a 15-year-old. It was the best night of my life. But, yep. mate, it, I'm salivating thinking about someone like you, I mean, can you take us through 
how you got picked, what happened, how you found out. It, it's 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 a story a lot of people want to know about about those days about finding out things. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously, going back to how it all started, Ron McAuliffe obviously was a man that uh, put the gesture to to the New South Wales guys or or, or authorities and and said that. Um, can we do a state of origin concept or a state of origin so that the Queensland players that were playing for New South Wales can come back to Queensland and play for Queensland? And they weren't a real fan of it, but um, they had a good chat and that. And then um, I think the players sort of said, yeah, well, OK, if you give us $1,000 a game, we'll, yeah, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll vote for it. So it went ahead and uh, thankful, thankful for Thank God they did because we got the thousand dollars. But yeah, mate, look, um, I, I couldn't. Yeah, I was just over around, mate, and, and especially playing with Arthur Beats and you know uh, someone I grew up idolising, and then here I am playing with him. And I remember, as I was saying to you know, saying to him earlier, I said um, he came to the dressing room and. And he, I looked at him. I said, Arthur Beats and how he knows this. <laughs> and he walked over to me. He said, "Hey, go, Scotty." I couldn't believe it. I, you know, after after training, I ran down to the phone box, rang Mum, and told <laughs> really? her that Arthur Beats and knew my name. Yeah. That is gold, mate. You know, here I am. You know, kid from the bush, Townsville, growing up watching this bloke play, and here I am playing with him. You know, I can, you know, you know obviously the, it's different now. You know, with the, the football side of things, you know. But uh, back in those days, mate, it, I couldn't believe it, mate. Here I am running out on the field with Arthur Beats and I couldn't believe it. And I remember the first game and, and the roar, the sound of the crowd when they introduced him onto the field, it was deafening, man. And I, you know, getting this bunch now, just yeah. thinking about it and remembering, you know, that night was just unbelievable, yeah. you know. It was just, and, and it was the best night too because obviously we won the game yeah. and, um, I was his um, I was his waiter for the night. I, I was getting him beers all night, you know. So something's intriguing. Yeah. Something's intriguing me about that game, Scotty. Though is um, who did most of the talking in that in that dressing room? Like prior to you running well, out, who 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 was doing the most talking? Well, obviously Big Arthur was was you know main main actor, but you know John McDonald obviously yep. he was a coach and, and that. But mate, obviously Arthur, you know when he got up, everyone just sat there and looked at him, you know, and listened yeah. to him, you know. And he he gave us all a, a good message too, um, you know, saying to me, you know, as a young fella, he said, hey, mate, Scotty, I know it's your, your first big game, but I started where you are now, mate. So, mate, make the most of the opportunity. And, and I think that was the best message yeah. I ever got, you know. you got to make the most of, of the opportunities you get. And yeah. obviously, um, yeah, I just got out there and done my job. Because interestingly, you got picked from reserve grade. Mm. And if my memory serves me correct, Arthur got picked from reserve grade. That's right. He Parramatta. was playing Parramatta reserve yeah. grade um, yeah. in Sydney. Yeah. So that, isn't that amazing that you yeah, both got plucked from reserve yeah. grade, mm. you know, and, and went on to be, you know, legends yeah. of the game. You know, so. and, and proud to say that, you know, we're the first two Indigenous players to play Origin. You know? Yes. And then the numbering of the players now, we're all numbered. Um, they've given Arthur number one. Which they rang me and asked and said that is it okay if we give Arthur? I said yeah, mate, give me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Arthur's number one and I'm number two in the origin numbering. That's and fantastic. So, so Scotty, just if, just uh, refresh our memories, mate. So the week of the game, I think it was a, it was a Wednesday night game, but I think you had to play club football on the weekend. Is that correct? You didn't have a weekend off. You had to then then train Monday, Tuesday, and play Wednesday. Is that how it went? Yeah. Well. We used to do that when we were playing the interstate games, but in origin they they give us the weekend off. So gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But New South Wales would always play the weekend, and I think until we got to the to 1982 when it became a, a three match series. Yeah. Um, they took it seriously then, and mm. you know give the players the weekend off. Wonderful memories, the, Cole. Wonderful origin. memories. So I mean, the week of Origin camp was it? Is it like was it how you expected Origin? Was it how you expected uh, the uh, origin camp to be? You had training, a bonding session, that sort of thing. How intense was that week? Oh, mate, look, um, <laughs> I think you'd know yourself, mate. When when you're involved in a camp or a footy team, 
you know, playing jokes on players and all that sort of thing. We're, we're a part of the system, you know. Yeah. And, I mean, I remember obviously being being a part of the very first Origin game. We used to have a, a thing where when a new player came into the side, the best way to welcome him into the side was ignore him. <laughs> when, I remember when Alfie came into the side, Alfie Langer came into the side, um, we all said, yeah, just ignore him, you know. So anyway, we'd come for our medicals and that, and we were all standing in our little groups, and Alfie would come over, came over to me, Gina and, and Wally, and he came over and he stood there, and we turned our backs on him and <laughs> walked away, <laughs> and everyone was ignoring him. So he went, up, he went up to Bennett and said, oh, I don't think I'm welcome here, Wayne. He said, what is that? He said, oh, no, no one wants to talk to me. I said, ah, it's all right, mate. Okay, the shutdown's over. Yeah, yeah. welcome to the side, you know. <laughs> And that was part of it. And there was other things we'd do. And then that, that sort of got Alfie into the... He used to ring the players up from his room and act as a, you know, hi, I'm Barry Dick from the Courier Mail. Just want to get a story on you. And he, he'd interview him and that. And then go into the room, oh, here's your life story, you know. So, you know, part of that, you know, it was a part of Origin too was... And that's how it brought us together as a group. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, the fun times and, and obviously, you know, we'd, we'd have a few beers. Uh, leading up to the game, but obviously, you know, four days out from the game, three days out from the game, no more drinks, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, heads down. And, mate, who was your roommate at Origin Camp in your first Origin? Um, yeah, well, there you go. Um, uh, Normie Carr. It was Normie. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because we're, we're, we're interviewing Normie tomorrow and obviously a West legend, um, yeah. well and truly, but... What I find most interesting from that first Origin game, some of the amazing legends that came out of that back line, there was yourself, there was Mel, yeah. there was Chris Close, uh, Wally Lewis was locked. So you guys were all 19, 20, 21 vintage, weren't you? Exactly, mate. Exactly, mate. And I mean, and they fed off Arthur, obviously, you know, for him to lead us out. And he played the full game. Mm. Um, and an interesting, interesting statistic from that game, the two reserves didn't get on the field. Correct. No one wanted, wanted to come off, you know. That's and Bruce it was Astle and Norman Carr. Bruce Astle, you know, and, and they didn't get a start. And, uh, you know, that was the thing back in the days. We only had two reserves and, and no one wanted to come off in that first game because, you know, obviously it was uh, the start of, um, you know, something that was, you know, well, it's a highlight of the rugby league calendar now. And, and mate, I was just going to say, I mean, and, and having played Queensland pre-origin, mm. most of those guys on New South Wales side, I'm assume, assuming you played against in 79 when we used to get flogged, your Graham Eadies and, oh. and your Tommies, yes. your Les Boyds, those types of guys would have been sort of running around against you. Exactly. And then the boot was on the other foot. Did you feel like a sense of complacency from them at all leading up or during the game? Well, that's one of the things that, you know, I think they make it up. They make it up as an excuse to, to say that, oh, yeah, we never took it serious, you know, you know, we we're only playing against them blokes. But then, when the Origin series come about and and we were, we won the first, you know, four years and that, I think they started to say, shit, we better take this to fair dinkum, you know. <laughs> and obviously now it's a highlight as a of the rugby league calendar, as I say. But uh, they always made it as an excuse that they never took it seriously. But yeah, uh, it was a big thing for us and the Queensland supporters. Every time we played a game at Lane Park, it was packed. Yeah, that was the best atmosphere. Absolutely. Um, and now, obviously, yeah. Um, that was the thing back then, wasn't it? The, the crowds were part of folklore. Exactly. Yeah. They? They, they, yeah. they were they were a different breed back then. Oh, they? mate. Yeah. And I mean, you know, for me, you know, that was what the what it was all about, mate get out and do it for the state and the crowd and the supporters that can turn up for you, you know, so, yeah. um, you know, and that set it up for, you know, uh, obviously big crowds always at Lane Park, yeah. It was interesting, Berkey, um, that uh, probably this generation don't know about, but Scotty was part of that 1987 State of Origin side that went to Long Beach, California. Oh, of course, yeah. For an exhibition. Fourth game. So that was the fourth game, and, and a lot of people are, uh, are clueless about that particular game but we were talking about an offset mm. and Scotty has really fond memories about that um, that uh, particular game so what, what were yeah. some of those memories from from, from flying out to, to playing? <laughs> well obviously it was after our state of origin concept and we'd won that year and uh, we got on the plane and uh, yeah we had a good drink um, <laughs> we, we were okay you know 
uh, Benny didn't didn't care. You know, we, we got on the drink and the poor New South Wales guys, they had to stay off the drink up the front of the plane and that. So, yeah, they didn't get the drink. And, um, yeah, we had a good time when we went across there and that. And, yeah, mate, it was uh, uh, a great experience, obviously, going over there and, and obviously Gridiron being the being the, um, the highlight of, of the sports calendar over there. Mm. Um, they couldn't believe that we didn't wear, you know, um, helmets, helmets and shoulder pads and yeah. all that sort of yeah. stuff. They said, you guys are crazy. <laughs> you know? Anyway, yeah, it sort of um, showed our game to the to the, um, to the the American people and, yeah, a lot of people got on board. That's, That's fantastic. That. That's really good. Hey, Scott, I just want to fast forward a bit, mate. Um, obviously, the golden years of Wynnum. Yeah. And you were once a massive, you know, obviously an integral part of that. Um, 82, mm. like you make the first origin side, back up, you go to Wynnum, and then 82 rolls along and mm. the first ever Wynnum premiership. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm reading through that uh-huh. side yeah. and, uh, well, those sides, mate, they were amazing times. Can you run us through 82 and what the feeling like was during the year and leading up and, and the grand final from from your recollection for Wynnum? Oh, mate, look, um, that, you know, I put that behind number two as my favourite all-time um, rugby league achievement, you know, obviously playing for the, in the first origin and number two was winning, winning Manly's first ever premiership in 82, you know. Um, Wynnum, obviously, like Redcliffe, is, is like a little town on its own. Yep. And, man, they, they love their rugby league in Wynnum. And, um, you know, just getting on the bus to go to the game. DJ, we all got together at the club and uh, before we went into Lane Park and we all sat down and, and like Arthur said, you only get one opportunity, mate, and this is it. And uh, we and that, that bus trip to Lane Park was the quietest bus trip I ever had, you know, we're on the way through just the mindset of what what we had to do, you know, our job, our, what we had to do. And then we turn up there and it's a full house. Uh, I think there was, there was 32,000 there was. on the day. Yeah. And, um, mate, we got there and the, the walk out and see all the red and green. And mate, it's like anything, I suppose, same as yourself, Berkey, you know, when you get out there and that, and you, you just got to switch on, mate, and, and, and um, get out there and do your job. And, and obviously, you know, to, to win that game and, uh, you know, to come off the field and we did a lap of honour and that and um, to go back to Wynnum and when we turned up there to see the people on the footy field, the, the footy lights were on and the footy field was packed and the, the clubhouse was packed and, uh, mate, there's probably about 10,000 people there on the night and, mate, there yeah, it was great. It was, um, like I said, it was... Uh, behind the, the first origin, it was a it was the second highlight of my rugby league career, mate, and yeah, something I'll always remember. Man, I'm, I'm I'm just looking through the side, and there was yourself, like uh, Terry Butler, Brett French, yeah. Gino. There were mainstays of Origin footy back then as well. Yeah. He had a front row, a great front row of Mark Zillman, David Green, and and uh, Rod Morris. So you had a really yeah. good engine as well. So yeah. it was a very very good side, terrific terrific side. Well, I, I think. Um, uh, from from that comp Berkey and I'll, I can I'll, I think you'll back back this up is when we had that great side I think it done great for the Brisbane comp because yeah. everyone wanted to beat us you know and and you know when we play against Valleys or against East or South they would lift themselves to mm. beat us you know and I think it got the best out of you know the club sides or the players in the Brisbane competition and I think that formed a really great comp competition in in uh, in the 80s in, in, in the Queensland comp. Because we were, we were talking, uh, Berkey, about the fanaticism, weren't we, with the supporters? Yeah, um, without a doubt. Of, of how amazing it was. And, and as Scotty was saying, you know, like the little places like Wynnum and Redcliffe and, you know, mm. down at West End and South, th- 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 there were streamers and, and, and oh. all the shops were involved and, and the, the, the people at the, in, at the games and, yeah. you know, it, it was... It well, was totally well, different. Well, the home game, Burke, is like at Valleys, you'd, you'd have a full house. Yeah. You know, you go to South, full house. Yeah. You know, East, full house. You know, there was always, at the home grounds, it was it was packed. And the good thing about it, guys, was they'd all stand around the sideline. They'd be five, oh, yeah. six deep on the sideline, which <laughs> I love, because you could hear the abuse and you're right, you're right in the Coliseum of it. 
<laughs> oh, the winner, the trip pen was the best one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Well, well, he loved it, mate. Yeah. When he came to win them, it was it was he loved it after after yeah. that. He hated it before that. Yeah. But he loved it after he came to win them. <laughs> hey, Scotty, what was your um? Did you have a pre-game ritual that that Colin Scott went through? Like, was your Friday night meal spaghetti bolognese, or did you have a, a special pair of jocks you wore, or what was the Colin Scott ritual with with your games? Yeah, yeah mate. Obviously. Um, Meal wise, you know, I, I love me um, spaghetti, so I'd, I'd have a good spaghetti uh, 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 feed. Um, and, and bake, yeah, mate, I suppose from a game sense of point, uh, of point of view, you know, obviously um, without overthinking the game, you know, you just set your minds on your goals or, or your achievements. You know, obviously, fullback, you know, keeping your eye on the ball, taking the yep. bombs. On. I dropped a couple of bombs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, we all uh, have. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, mate, it's just focusing on 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 your job and, and what you you know um, had to do when you went out there and played. And, and obviously Gino was a big part of my game because he could get a ball away, you know, in tackles and that. So I'd always, every time he took the ball up, I'd follow him because I knew he could get the ball away. So, yeah. But you're a bit superstitious too about number one because you were, you were number one for Queensland, yeah. you were number one for Wynnum, you were number one for the Broncos, you were number one for Australia. <laughs> you know, so num that number one jersey for you was, was oh, pretty yeah. special, wasn't it? Yeah, and I mean, obviously, again, when you played at home, Berkey, you know, it went on the nuts, you know, you, you did, you had to pump you up, you know, and oh, get definitely. you out there and, and, you know, obviously do your job. But, mate, yeah, and, um, and, I, and I know... You know, when we had younger players coming into the side and 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 that, and we'd we'd pull them aside and have a good yarn with them, you know. Yeah. So you know, put them in the the right headspace, and I think that's a big part of the game. You know, is is making sure the young fellas, you know, um, you know, just go out there with the right um, headspace and that and confidence. It's good. It's good so, point, Colin. Yeah. It's um, people can overthink the game these days from a player mm -hmm. perspective, and I think you just put it so eloquently you just it, you just got to keep it simple exactly and mate. play to your strengths exactly man and you know um uh it's funny i was always to at some stages you know commentate the game to myself you know yeah, yeah. nothing so wrong what, with that what was it like when uh 87 come around yeah the last grand final Rickliffe and brothers mm. 1988 was going to be a whole different ball game so yes it's uh it's an extra interesting statistic that you yeah. and Berkey actually were inaugural Broncos. Yeah. Did you, I'll throw it to you two guys, did did you see a switch in the, the, the aura of the game in Brisbane? Did you see a switch in the crowds? Did well, you... obviously, and I said that to you earlier, Berkey, I, said, I think uh, the competition in the 80s in the Brisbane, I thought was, you know, was fantastic and was, it was great for the Queensland country areas. Mm. Yeah. And I think the invent of the Broncos, although, you know, they're, they're a big part of the comp now and that, and it's the way it is. You know, it, it, it tore apart, I think, the um, the countryside of Queensland Rugby League and also the club competition in, in Brisbane where, you know, you go to games now and, you know, the crowds ain't there and, and that. And it, yeah, it tore apart the BRL, I believe, but, um, you know, it was all about the dollar and I suppose uh, that's the way it was and that's the way it is now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Colin. I mean, what I really loved about the 80s, and you'd agree, mate, was those state league trips away. We'd go oh, to your wide I, bays, you'd go to your Toowoombas, yeah. and they would be pumped up two weeks. They knew you were coming to town. They wanted to, and they wanted to ambush us. Yep. But the feeling in those games in those country areas during those state league were intense. For sure. And they were great crowds, mate. They, they were great crowds. Up, you know, and it was, it was great competition, as you say. You know, and it's, you know, unfortunately, that's not there now. And we've lost a lot of country clubs. Yeah, you know, I, I believe because of that, and because of, you know, the QRL or the BRL now, um, you know, the Sydney sides are, have got first option to country players. You know, which, yeah. I, you know, unfortunately is taken away the, um, the QRL comp. Yeah, right. Eh? Hey, Scotty, can I just pair back a little bit? Um, tell us about your first test, '83. Like that must have been a struggle. Because I think Queensland won the series three 0 that year from memory. Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did three 0 Yeah, yeah, because um, um, yeah, obviously they, a great thrill from a young kid they, coming from Townsville down to be to be you know to be yeah. picked for Australia. Yeah, 
Um, well, unfortunately, we lost that game. Yeah. In 83? Um, they'd already won it. Yeah. We, we lost the 82 game, uh, the 83 uh, match, which was in Brisbane. Um, but, yeah, mate, look, um, getting me first test jersey or, 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 or anything like that was, um, you know, a great experience for me. And, um, um, you know, I've, I've, yeah, I feel um, let down that, you know, I believe I could have done more in the game, but um, they were just too good for us on the night. Uh, they had a good side too. They had Mark Graham, uh, Olsen Filipana, um, and a few good good uh, front rowers in that game. And, um, uh, mate, it was, yeah, like I said, it was a, it was a letdown for me, but uh, the one and only test. But, um, yeah, that's life. And uh, You have a test jersey, brother. It's yours. Yeah, well, that's it. A lot of people, you know, uh, that I believe were better than me, you know. And when I look at it, I look at, you know, Smoke and Joe and, and that, you know, players like that, you know, they they were good enough to play for Australia back in our days. As you know, mate, they were great players. We were, we were talking players. Uh, we were talking before Berkey, Scotty and I, just off, off camera, how unlucky he was not to go on that 1982 kangaroo tour. For sure. Uh, you know, great year with Wynnum, Queensland fullback. Um, unfortunately, Ian Schubert got picked ahead of Scotty and... Um, Came down to a casting vote. Oh, I did it? Yeah, because the three Queensland selectors, they picked me, and the three New South Wales selectors picked um, Ian Schubert, and it came down to the ARL, which... Uh, Kevin Humphreys? Ke no, Ken Arthurson. Ken Arthurson, oh, well, he's a manly guy, and Schubert was at Manly then, wasn't he? Well, yeah, there was a deal done. <laughs> yeah. I won't I'm, not, I won't I'm not... No, I'm saying, I mean, that's obviously... It goes without saying then. That's, you know... Yeah. But we, there's we, always we just, a horse killed. Go on, mate. Well, we're just, I was just saying that that was probably, uh, Scotty was saying that was probably one of his uh, lowlights in his career, was not making that 82 kangaroo yeah. tour, which I, I, I still to this day think that he was bitterly, uh, you know. Well, we'd won, the, we'd won the Origin Series and we won the grand final. Correct. Mm -hmm. well, it was at the back end of the season and Australia's side got named a week after our grand final. So I thought, well, I'm still fit, you know, still mm -hmm. going around, whereas um, Schubert had you know, he'd already played for Australia and and that, and I was just a young kid. I was only 22 at the time, and I thought it'd be a great, you know, and like like yourself, Berkey, you know, everyone wanted to go on a kangaroo tour. Yeah. Back in the days. It was a, Without a doubt. It's the career. pinnacle. It's yeah. the pinnacle. Hey, Scotty, just fast forward a little bit, mate. Looking at the 84 premiership side mm -hmm. here, mate, you never played in 84. They, they had um, uh, Brian Walsh at fullback. Yeah. What, what, what was the story around 84 for yourself? Well, there we go. Here's another one. Um, I got uh, I got sent off in a um, a game uh, against South. Really? <laughs> at South, yeah. Um, who was the fullback? Was it you, Berkey? No, it was uh, Badge. No, no, not Badge. That was a winger. Sorry. I, I'll think of his name. You'd probably know him. And I, he stood, stepped back inside of me, and I just reached out, and he. Yeah, he ran into my arm, yep. and the referee sent me off for a head-eye tackle. Oh. So I missed the grand final. You're kidding me. Was that in the semi-final that happened? Yeah. Oh, really? And, um, yeah, I got suspended, and, um, um, yeah, Brian Walsh uh, played fullback. Who Back then, Walshy was probably the most oh. versatile player in the competition, if not Australia. Great player, fantastic player. He was, you know, the 5'8 in our yep. very first origin uh, – Premiership win. Correct. And then he came along and that, but um, no, he was a great player. Like it was a 42-8 shellacking in the grand final. Once again, looking through this side, Scotty, other than yourself, French, mm. Miles, Butler, Lewis at halfback, Ian French, mm. Mal Green, Greg Dowling, David Green, Gary Coyne. Like that is an yeah. intense side. That's yeah, all, mate, for sure. And after the game, I remember going to the dressing rooms and they took a photo of me tipping a beer over Walshy and... Um, I thought, oh, give us my jersey. He said, no, it's just my jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I had to take a reserve jersey. <laughs> yeah, good on him. Like uh, Simo and I were talking, Simo, pre-interview um, uh, pre about that's possible that that was one of the best club sides in Brisbane history, that winning yeah. side of 84, well, even with Scotty that, not playing. After that game, Berkey, and when Canterbury won the grand final in Sydney, yeah, um, 
uh, they put a, um, a thing to the Bulldogs. You, do you want to play the Brisbane? How about we play the Brisbane Premiers against the Sydney Premiers? And um, the, Peter, the Moore. Peter Moore, the, C, the CEO of the Bulldogs, and he said, no, nah, not going to do it, mate. Not interested. We had about, um, I think, four internationals in our side and seven state yeah, of origin state of players. players. Yeah. So would have been a good... Uh, would have been a good, good match, matchup, yeah. yeah. Without a doubt, mate. Bird Fast Yossi. forward to 86 against Brothers. Once again, a fantastic side yourself. Scotty Lewis, Gino, Wally, Bobby Linder was there then, Ian French, yeah. Mal Green again, um, and, and Greg Dowling. So, like, names Australia, Queensland, just fantastic names. It was, it was a great side. And, and like I said before, you know, the Brisbane sides back then, they'd, they'd just lift themselves, you know. When they played against us, and mm. you know, it was only it was a very close game that one, and we were lucky to to get away with it. Yeah, Forty six, yeah, and um, you know, uh, what was his name? Um, Steve Carter. God bless him. He's unfortunately passed away now. Yeah. He gave it to Greg Dowling that day, you know, and it was on. But uh, like I said, mate, it was a great compact in those days, and um, I think Brothers won it the next year. Yeah, they did the last one. Yeah, the very last um, one. Yeah, which was a great uh, one. It was good days. Great days. There was uh, an interesting, uh, just going back to um, Scotty's uh, origin uh, playing days, Berkey, uh, yeah. I, I tapped on it before with you, um, of how Scotty was alerted that he was in the, the Queensland side. Yeah. Can you can you tell us how you got told? Yeah, well, obviously back in the days we were, uh, sent telegrams. Oh, so, of course, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I had a knock on the door. And the bloke with the telegram, I said, oh, it's a telegram. I said, yeah. Mr. Scott, I said, yeah. Got the telegram. I opened the telegram up and uh, it was from um, Ross Livermore. Contact oh. Queensland Rugby League, you're in the side. <laughs> that is gold. Have you still got the telegram, Scotty, somewhere? Yeah, mate. I actually, I, 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 I got it, I threw it up on Facebook. So, Scotty, um, when we got. So in 87, obviously, whether it was going to be a nucleus, we knew it was going to be the following a year, um, and there were some priority signings. Obviously, obviously, Reeves came to you sometime in 87, say, Collier, uh, uh, what are your movements for 88? Is that how your conversation went down? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, Wally, uh, Gino, um, Greg Dowling. Um, Turtle. Turtle, yeah. Healthy. We all, all got signed, or, oh, well, were offered contracts and yeah we were and I you know I wasn't a real big fan of it because I you know I thought well, well we're going down there you know, let's stay here but yeah you know, obviously all my mates were gone so I said oh yeah I'll go over myself too so yeah we all went went across there in eighty two and that and I think you know like I said back back earlier you know it it, it sort of stuffed the BRL competition and and that so um. But yeah, mate, um, we all got together and then um, went to the Broncos and um, uh, that was it from yeah. there. So. Tell us about those early days, though, Scotty, at, at the Broncos. Like, tell us tell us from like that first training session mm. and just a couple of little things that people probably don't know. Yeah, well, I suppose it was like, like you know, like the Brisbane Rep team, Berkey, you know. Yeah. We were all, you know, together playing and that, so... Um, yeah, um, we're all, all pulled together, but obviously playing in the in the Sydney comp, and I think you remember the first game we played Manly, and now the Premiership winners from the year before. That's right. We we tailed them up uh, 30, 30 odd to to six or seven. Oh, I don't know what the, I can't remember the score, but it was forty four twelve. Yeah, we tailed them up at uh, Lane Park, and uh, I think that set up our uh, season for us. And yeah, I and you remember that first game? Oh, mate, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, you know, the early years, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the population in Brisbane didn't really get behind the Broncos because of the, 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 the BRL comp, but mm -hmm. as, as, as we've gone on now, obviously, you know, they, they, they attract the biggest crowds in the NRL now, so, yeah, yeah it's a big part of the game, but, um, yeah, mate, I suppose pulling on that Jersey and that same thing, mate. And I suppose it, it helped me being a part of the Winham and the first Origin and, and Origin games. Yeah. You know, and to be part of that, obviously, you know, um, was just kept me heading the right um, 
right frame of mind and just get out there and do your job. Mm. Mate, can I pair it back a bit? I mean, Simo and I quite often, often wax lyrical. From your perspective, what was what was your what was your favourite ground you played at in the BRL that you loved going to, knew it was going to be on? <laughs> well, <laughs> look, you know, I, obviously, you know, Cougar Eye was 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 the best, but uh, I'd say um, Bash Up Park, mate. Bash Up, yeah. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the grand final, isn't it? Everyone, oh, mate. Everyone does. <laughs> mate, everyone gets into it there, man. It was, you know, when you when you went there, you knew you had to, you had to back up, you yeah. know. It's going to be on today, boys, so when it starts, let's just get into it. Yeah, Zulu. Yeah, big Zulu yeah. and the boys. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, they they love to get it on. And Scotty, from your playing perspective in the Brisbane Comp, who were some of the standout players you loved playing with, and and who did you look forward to playing against? Anyone really sticks in your mind in, in those areas? Oh, look, you know, we we had a, you know some great players in the Brisbane Comp back in the eighties, you know, and you know I think you'll know, you know, Mel uh, Badge, Belcher, and, and Smoke and Joe, um, you know. Geez, I could go on all night, you know, with the, the, the quality of players we had. But, um, yeah, obviously, South, um, you know, is a great rivalry yeah. with them. And obviously, with Valleys too, when Wally was there, you know, I remember we used to give it to each other, you know, when we were playing each other, you know, we used to throw the ball at him and that. And then, but after the game, we'd shake hands. It was all that. fun. Yeah. It was all fun, mate, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a great competition and a great rivalry. You know, and was uh, club sides. And was Desi Morris your your best coach? You coach uh, yeah, under? yeah, Desi Morris for sure, mate. He was he was just one of those guys. Uh, you know, we looked up to him and that, and um, he had a great um, personality. You know, and 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 with the players, uh, you know, a, he, he had a good attraction with players and that. Yeah. And, uh, mate, he was a great bloke. Yeah, fantastic. And Colin, it must be very, very proud for you being one of the first Indigenous guys to represent Queensland in the Origin period and, and to yeah. forge a path for some other wonderful Indigenous guys that have come through. Do you still catch up with those guys in, in, in the Indigenous games when they're on pre-season? Yeah, sure, mate. And I mean, you know, obviously with the work I do, you know, work with a lot of Indigenous kids and um, there's some great Indigenous talent out there and yeah. there still is. And unfortunately, in our communities, um, you know, they they sort of they don't move away from that community. And it was the same as me up in Townsville. I moved to Brisbane when I was 19, um, and and that and I had a lot of kids that I was playing with. They were they were some of them were better than me, you know, and and they didn't get the opportunities um, back in the, in the days. And I look at it now, and um, you know. Rugby league's still a big thing in our communities and we've still got some great players. So, um, you know, if I get out amongst the community and we see a young fella there, you know, hopefully I can get him down and, and play with Wynnum or, or, or someone like that to to get him, you know, uh, an opportunity and, uh, you know, go on and achieve what I, what I did in my career because, uh, you know, I was like them back in the days, you know, I never thought that I'd wear a Queensland jersey or an Australian jersey. But, yeah, look at that. Yeah. It all happened. Because your work in the community too probably spans back to in the year 2000. A lot of people might not know that, that you won mm. the Australian Sports Award. Yeah, mate, it was uh, just an award I, I got. You know, I was um, you know, doing a fair bit of work in, in the Indigenous communities and that. And um, uh, obviously the, the rugby league background sort of helped me achieve that award too. So. Um, yeah, mate, it was a, it was a great honour, and, and um, you know, I feel I feel honoured now with the people that have got that award, mm. and, you know, being a part of all that. You know, it's a you know it's a great honour. So it's something that I um, you know I hold dear to my heart, and mm. um, you know when I get out in the communities, you know, because you know, I come from this a lot of the same backgrounds as as these young ones that are out there now, and and uh, just tell them, you know, if you want it, go out there and achieve it yeah yeah that's a wonderful right. achievement colin great 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 yeah. stuff you're doing mate for those kids to get them down and get them settled because it's a big thing moving home as you can attest to it um mm. and to have someone like you in their corner um it's just and and that's the richness these kids need from guys like yourself um yeah. just to understand the sacrifice you've got to make to to make it exactly right and i mean you know, I think today, you know, um, you know, with rugby league, it's become a well, it's a, a, a job now. 
Yeah. And, um, obviously, in the game and, and obviously the same as the workplace, you know, I tell them they've got to turn up every week and that, but uh, they've got to have the attitude too, you know. Mm. You know if you've got a you know, good attitude, you know, you'll make it not only in sport but in, in life in general. Well, guys, we've got to get close wrapping up. So, you know, any any final thoughts on Scotty? Mate, there was just one thing that I, I, I want to um, very briefly just touch on, and, and I'll let Scotty do all the talking, but there was one thing a couple of weeks ago that, uh, and I had uh, spoken to you about it, uh, Berkey, that a Wynnum fan from back in the day, um, uh, his wife reached out to Scotty about getting something signed, some memorabilia signed or what have you. Yeah. Uh, so Scotty went one step further and um, f for this fan because he's a big Colin Scott fan. So I'll, I'll yeah. pass it over to you, mate. As he said, yeah, there's a lady that was on Facebook and she messaged me yep. through Facebook and just told me that her husband was a big Winter Manly fan and um, a big, you know obviously followed my career and was a big fan of myself. He said, "Have you got anything um, that you could sign and?" and I'll pay for it and I said oh yeah right. so I done up a piece and I signed it um, um, it was a winner Manly's first ever um, premiership fantastic and I signed it and I said look um, I'll be happy to um, deliver it and oh, she said wow. oh my god you would just she said yeah no that's not for you so I said give me your address and that and uh, she didn't tell him and I uh, went around with a piece and knocked on the door he opened the door and he, <laughs> holy uh, hell, what are you doing here? I said, that is gold. And I give him uh, give him the present, he opened it up and yeah, mate, he was over the moon you now. And you know, I, I felt good about it too, because obviously it's about giving it back. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a you know, a good concept and I'm, I'm sure these players are today, I think that it's about giving back to the supporters and that, you know, I think it's a, a good idea for, uh, you know, rugby league players to do, you know. Guys, we've got that video. So for those who want to look at when they were King's Facebook page or website, we'll have it up there over the next week or so and see the impact that Colin had on that young gentleman's life with a with a wonderful gesture. Good work, Scotty. Well done, mate. Nice. Look, from my end, Kyle, I just want to reach out, mate, once again and say thank you so much for joining us today. It's a great thrill of mine and Sumo and all, all the BRL tragics pre-88 to have someone like you just open up with your richness and your integrity about your love for the game and Mate, we really appreciate you being on the show today, mate. And hopefully we can catch up soon when all this is over for a, for a nice beer and a steak somewhere and, and thank you more personally. Yeah, thanks, Berkey. I mean, I'd, I'd like to pass on my respects to the players previous to us, you know, in the 60s and 50s yeah. and 60s that played the, and they, and they, in the game it is today, you know. So I just want to shout out to all them players that played before my time that inspired us or myself to play the game of rugby league and and um, yeah, thank you. Well thank said, you. Scotty. Good on you, mate. So guys, that's the end of When They Were Kings today. Once again, thanks to Colin Scott. He's Mike Simpson. I'm David Burke, and we'll see you on the next show. Bye for now. Cheers. See you guys.